A Democratic presidential candidate spending an October night in Texas, of all places, less than two weeks out from Election Day, it's more likely than you think. Last night, Bob, Vice President Kamala Harris had her largest campaign event to date in the state where everything is bigger. Nearly 30,000 people attended the rally to see Harris, as well as uh, country legend Willie Nelson, the Queen Bee herself, Beyonce, and Beyonce's former Destiny's Child bandmate, Kelly Rowland. Beyonce did not perform, as she made it clear. She is not supporting Harris as a musician, but as a mother. Take it from her. America has a problem. It's time to sing a new song. A song that began 248 years ago. The old notes of downfall, discord, despair no longer resonate. The campaign went to Texas in the middle of a packed swing state heavy schedule to address reproductive rights, treating Texas as the epicenter for many of the horror stories that we've heard and reported on in post-Roe America. Texas has a law now that offers a cash bounty for turning in someone who merely helps a friend or a family member get the care they need. In Texas, the law provides for prison for life for health care providers, for doing what they believe is in the best interest of their patient. In some counties in Texas, they have passed travel bans to prevent women from going to other states to receive care. These are the stakes. Now, if you think Texas is in play for Democrats, you might be drunk in love with the Harris campaign, and we beg you, don't hurt yourself. Uh, but hold up. The real race to watch in Texas is the race for the Senate, where Republican Ted Cruz is narrowly leading Democratic Congressman and former NFL player Colin Allred. Now, this may sound familiar. Democrats were bullish about Beto O'Rourke's campaign against Senator Cruz in 2018, just for him to end up falling short. So for Allred to succeed in this state, he's going to have to be flawless. Joining me now is the Texas Congressman and Democratic nominee for Senate, Colin Allred. Sorry for that uh, setup, uh, Congressman, that you're going to have to be flawless, but there's no room for error in this one. Well, thanks, Ali. Thanks for having me on. And you know, listen, I, I, I do uh, take a little of the issue with it. We are here uh, because of the contrast uh, between who Ted Cruz is and who I am, also because of what he has done in the last six years since that last election that you just mentioned, where he's gone to Cancun when the lights went out, where he's been responsible for this abortion ban, where he's tried to overturn an American presidential election. And also because I'm the most bipartisan Texan in Congress who has a record of not only winning in tough races, but of representing areas uh, that are purple or politically you know, quite mixed. And I know uh, that we're going to beat Ted Cruz. And folks need to wake up to what's happening here in Texas, that Texans are sick and tired of having our freedom taken away, that we're sick and tired of these stories about Texas women and families mm -hmm. being used as an example for the country. And we're going to change it. Uh, the issue of immigration also central to your state. You and I have talked about this many times, uh, central to your race yeah. as well. What's the balance yeah. that, that Democrats need to strike and that, and that you're striking on immigration policy in order to win this election? Yeah. Well, thanks, Ali. As you know, my, my family's from Brownsville, the very tip of Texas, where my grandfather was a customs officer. That's where I spent a lot of my childhood. Uh, and I know that we have to talk about border security in a serious way. What we have to offer is solutions to it, though. Everybody on the internet can point out, you know, problems. We, that's not what you elect people to do. You elect people to solve the problems, and that's the issue we have with Ted Cruz, which is that for 12 years he has not only not solved this problem, he has prevented us actively from doing what we know we need to do to try and secure the border and fix our immigration system. And it's not just this year with the $20 billion in border security that he turned down and said, we don't need a border bill that would have brought 1,500 new border patrol agents and 100 new immigration judges and 4,000 asylum personnel. It's also even going back to 2013 when Barack Obama and you know, a group of senators were working on a comprehensive reform then that you know, Marco Rubio and John McCain were a part of. He took that down then too. He's been there forever. He's never been a part of solving anything. He just wants to use it to run on. And we have a phrase for folks who do that in Texas. When you're all hat and no cattle, when you don't have anything, any substance behind you. And that's what we've seen. That's why we get to turn the page. You were on stage last night. You shared a moment with Amanda Zorowski and her husband. Of course, we've heard her story many times. Texas abortion laws 
she, she wanted to have the baby she was having. Um, it was not a viable pregnancy. And they, they literally told her these stories that people make fun of, that, that you come back when you're close to dead. And that's literally what happened. She came back to the hospital when she was close to dead. She nearly died. She has lost some of her reproductive yeah. organs. Um, th this is what Texas laws are doing to women, whether or not they want to terminate a pregnancy. That's right. Amanda and Josh are, are friends of mine. And I, I do want to just note, Allie, that it's very difficult to tell a personal story in any setting. It's incredibly difficult to go out there in front of 30,000 people in a stadium with millions of people watching on TV and talk about the worst moment in your life. And the bravery that that shows and uh, the commitment that that shows to make sure that other Texans don't have to go through what you went through is to me something that we should all be pointing to as saying, if these women and these families are willing to go through this, if they're willing to step out and talk about their most difficult moments, then what can we do in our personal capacity as knocking on doors or making phone calls or going to my website at colinallred.com, what can we do to make sure this doesn't happen anymore. Because if they're doing that, then we certainly are being called by them as fellow Americans and as Texans to get involved too. Uh, and so I think it has to be a rallying cry, and I think it is. There are so many people who tell, have told me their stories just the other night, at, you know, was, was shaking hands after doing an event, and like more stories are just coming in every single second. And I'm, just, I'm telling you, Ali, this is something having, is happening in Texas because this is not who we are. And folks are understanding that we can change this by beating Ted Cruz in this election. And, and just tell me again, because because we've, we've some of us have thought we've seen this movie before, where it looks good, the polling numbers look good, the Democratic candidate, uh, high-profile Democratic candidate, looks like they're within striking distance, and then something goes the wrong way. What is it? You say something's happening. What's different this time. Yeah. Well, as I always say, I'm not really interested in our past. I'm interested in our future. And, you know, the fact that we had a very close election last time is also part of why you can point to that we're building on that. Instead right. of saying we came close and we didn't make it, then we can't do it. Most folks would say we came close. Let's do it next time. Right. And so to me, there's that. But it's also just true, as I said, that in the six years uh, that you know, this is what we're doing is basically a job interview. And you've had six years to show us since the last election who you are, that Ted Cruz has enacted this abortion ban. He's singularly responsible for it. And we could talk about that. He's gone to Cancun when we needed him most. He was the architect of January 6th in the Senate. And when that mob came and I was going to hold that hold a door and protect my colleagues, he was hiding in a supply closet. We know exactly who he is. This is not a surprise. We've been running uh, a race that's bringing folks together from Liz Cheney uh, to you know every part of our coalition. And I think on November 5th, we're going to shock a lot of folks. But in my opinion, it really shouldn't be that big of a shock. And I need folks to get involved right now because these last 10 days are incredibly important. Congressman, good to see you as always. Thanks for making time for us. Congressman yeah. Colin Allred is the Democratic exactly. nominee in the race for the Senate seat in Texas. I should mention we have reached out to the incumbent Senator Ted Cruz to invite him onto the show. And... Wait for it. We did not get a response.